In this video, we are going to create an earth and handle input from the user to rotate and zoom into the earth. To begin, we need a nice place for our world to reside. Outer space seems like the right choice. Let's download a nice skybox from the Unity Asset Store and import it into our project. This asset contains cube maps. Drag the cube map into the scene and it will automatically create a material asset containing the cube map. Alternately, if you have a material with a skybox render with the cube map, you may set it in a menu window, rendering, lighting, environment, skybox. If you're skilled with scripts, you can have a list of skybox materials and set down the skybox with the code render settings skybox equals your skybox material. I tried to create a little earth using a spear and wrapping it with the, a material containing a texture of the earth but couldn't get the wrapping just right. So I got this little earth for free on the asset store and it worked wonderfully. Let's get into scripting. I like to put all my scripts in a folder, make a new script for the world, and double click to open it in Visual Studio. We can respond to inputs in a script. Use the update function to test for inputs. Let's use W, A, S, and D for rotation. I use input.getKeyCodeA to test if the A key has been pressed. The built-in update function is called from Unity every frame. How long a frame takes depends on how many calculations the app is doing and how complicated it is. Since this is unpredictable, Instead of rotating the Earth a certain amount of every frame, we multiply that by time dot delta time, which is time elapsed since the last time the update function was called. That way, it will mo always move at a predictable speed. We can adjust it by multiplying that by a number to make it faster, or slower. Let's use R for moving forward toward the earth and F for moving back away from the earth. Before we go moving the camera around to make it closer or farther from the earth, we should make the camera move slower as it gets closer to the earth and prevent it from crashing into the earth. In order to do this, we need to find its distance from the Earth. To do this, create a function that uses a raycast to determine distance. The world object is definitely not to scale of the real Earth, and it would cause problems with rendering such as jittering, due to the limits of precision of the float variable type that is used to define each vertex of the object. We can find the bounds of the rendered object using any scaling and taking into account that we know the real radius of the Earth. We can find the represented real length away from the Earth if we know the distance the player 
is from the surface of the Earth object. In the function to find the distance away from the Earth, I introduce you to the concept of ray casting, which sends a ray away from an original and in a direction and finds any object in its path and its distance away. Something extremely useful for a person with shooters. Using the distance away from the Earth, we can speed up the player when it is further from the Earth or slow down the advance of the player when it is nearer. In the next video, we will take a look at the distance the player is from the Earth to create a higher level of detail as it gets closer to its surface.